Hello, welcome to Sigma Tech Learning Hall. I'll be your instructor for biology. For this class, we are going to be taking our exercises from the exam guide app. Now, if you don't already have this installed in your device, I would like you to download the app in order to follow along in this class. Now, exam guide is a leading educational app that helps students prepare adequately for various exams. Exams such as the UTME, the post-UTME, WIAC, GCE, IGMB, KCPE, JUPEB, Calbepedia. In the junior sections, we also have the BECE, we have the JSCE, and so much more. Now, you can download the app from www.examguide.com or you visit the Google Play Store to download. Now, please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to update yourselves on new videos that will be coming up. Now, if you're ready for this class, let's get started. Today, we're going to be looking at terrestrial habitat. Terrestrial habitat. Now, we have um, um, discussed aquatic habitat, and we said that aquatic habitat is a body of water in which living organisms dwell or live naturally. And then we also looked at the different types of aquatic habitat. We said we have the marine water habitat, we have the estuarine or brackish water habitat, and then we have the fresh water habitat. Today we're going to be looking at terrestrial habitat, which is the second type of aquatic, or sorry, which is the second type of habitat. We're just looking at two. In some books, you will see a boral habitat, but this time around, we will just be talking about aquatic habitat and terrestrial habitat. Now, there are also subtopics to take note of. Now, the subtopics include definition and types of terrestrial habitat. We're going to define what terrestrial habitat is. We're also going to be looking at the types of terrestrial habitats. And then also we will be talking about um, the types of terrestrial habitat, which includes marsh habitat, we have forest habitat, we have grassland habitat, and then we have arid land habitat. These are the four types of um, terrestrial habitat we will be discussing in today's class. Now, apart from that, we are also going to be looking at our objective. So by the end of this lesson, learners or you should be able to define and mention the types of terrestrial habitat. Also be able to describe a marsh habitat. We are also going to be lo looking at you being able to describe a forest habitat, describe a grassland habitat, and also describe an arid land habitat. Okay, so these are the areas you're expected to concentrate much on in order to be able to answer a few questions that will be coming at the end of this class. Now, let's begin with the first sub to, um, subtopic, which is definition and mentioning of types of terrestrial habitat. Now, terrestrial habitat is a, land, a landed area where living organisms live naturally in. Remember, we said that aquatic habitat is a body of water where living organisms can dwell naturally. So terrestrial habitat is a landed area, an area of land where living organisms dwell or live naturally. Now there are four main types of terrestrial habitat. We have the marsh habitat, we have the forest habitat, and then we have the savanna habitat. And finally number four is the arid land habitat, marsh habitat, forest habitat, savanna habitat or grassland. Another name for um, savanna habitat is grassland habitat and then arid land habitat. Now take a look at marsh habitat. What is marsh habitat? Marsh is actually a lowland habitat which is usually waterlogged all the time. Usually waterlogged or flooded all the time. It is a lowland habitat. Marsh is often regarded as a transition, is seen as a transition from aquatic uh, habitats into terrestrial habitats. So in this um, habitat, you see 
um, in some areas you find water and in some areas you find land all right but even where you find the land the land is usually waterlogged now you can see in this this is an example of a marsh now how is marsh being formed we're going to look at three ways marshes can be formed a marsh habitat can be formed one of the ways a marsh habitat can be formed is when water overflows its bank its bank or a river overflows its bank and accumulate on a lowland area when a river overflows its bank and accumulate on a lowland area we said a marsh is formed Another way a marsh can also be formed is when heavy rain or heavy and extensive rainfall takes place and accumulates, the water accumulates on a land surface or on a low land surface. That particular area can also be referred to as a marsh habitat. And number three way a marsh habitat can be formed is that marsh can also be formed when ponds and lakes are filled up with soil from the surroundings and organic debris from plants causing water logging. That is when uh, uh, organic debris remains of plants and animals uh, 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 full, uh, fill up a particular pond or lake and also soil particles fill up that particular pond or lake, it gives rise to the formation of a marsh. All right. Now, there are different types of marsh. We have what we call the freshwater marsh, which consists mainly of fresh waters. And in fact, a freshwater marsh is formed when rivers or fresh waters accumulate on a lowland surface. In, for example, rainfall. Okay, we said that a marsh can be formed through extensive rainfalls that accumulates on a lowland surface. Now, if that happens, you can also get a fresh water marsh or a fresh water marsh can be formed. Number two type of uh, marsh is the salt water marsh. The salt water marsh. The salt water marsh is formed when, it, when sea or ocean overflows its bank and then accumulates on a lowland surface area or a lowland surface. That is how salt water marsh is also formed, okay? Now, characteristics of marsh habitat. What are some of the characteristics you can identify or see in a marsh habitat? Now, number one is the nature of the soil. The nature of the soil is usually waterlogged. Remember in our definition we said so. It is wet, it is soft, and it is always waterlogged. Number two characteristics of marsh is the presence of lowland habitat. Remember we said water accumulates on a lowland habitat. So the lowland habitat must be present for a marsh habitat to be formed. So in other words, one of the features of a marsh habitat is the presence of a lowland habitat. Number three is presence of stagnant water. Now, marsh is not a running or flowing water. It's not, you don't see flowing or running waters in it, no. There is always presence of what? Stagnant water. And also, based on the presence of stagnant water, there is also presence of organic matter. And because there is a presence of organic matter, there will be high rate of organic decomposition. High rate of organic decomposition. Another characteristic of marsh habitat is there is high um, relative humidity, high relative humidity, and to an extent also high rainfall. So you see high rainfall and high relative humidity. Now, plants that can be found in marsh habitat, both the freshwater marsh and the saltwater marsh, we have an example of white mangrove. We have the white mangrove. We have the red mangrove. We also have the raphael palm. Raphael palm can also be found in the marsh. Now, animals that can be found there, we have the mud skipper. We have the mud skipper. We have the frogs. Frogs can also be found there. Toads can also be found there. Snakes can also be found there. Crocodiles can also be found in a marsh 
habitat. Now, the food chain that can be observed in a marsh habitat includes, now, uh, in terms of this, we can have flowering plants, okay, flowering plants serving as um, producers and insects feeding from those flowering plants serving as primary consumers, frogs feeding on the insects serving as secondary consumers, and then crocodiles feeding on those frogs serving as tertiary consumers. So that is a food chain you can observe or see in a marsh habitat. Now, what about the factors that affect marsh habitat? Examples of the factors that affect marsh habitat, we have temperature, we have rainfall, we have light, we have relative humidity, we have salinity, we also have nature of the land. These are factors that affect marsh habitat. All right. Now, next on the line or the next type of terrestrial habitat is the forest habitat. The forest habitat. Now, what is a forest? A forest is simply an extensive community of plants dominated by tall trees. Extensive community of plants dominated by tall trees. I don't know if you've ever visited a forest zone or a forest place or a place filled with much trees. You will agree with me that there is a, if a, a forest is an extensive community of plants. And those plants you find there are tall trees. Trees that have buttress roots, trees that have broad leaves, thick barks, and so on. You can see and very tall trees, very tall trees. Then also we have several characteristics of um, forest habitat. What can you see? What are the features of forest habitat? Number one, there is always presence of trees. Presence of trees with broad leaves. You see trees with broad leaves and also in some cases you see falling leaves on the place. So presence of trees with broad leaves. We also have presence of trees with buttress roots. You see the roots spreading out. Buttress roots. Number three is presence of tall trees. There is always presence of tall trees. Examples of such kinds of trees you find in forest habitat include the Iroko tree. It is a very tall tree. You have the mahogany tree. You have the obeche tree. These are tall trees and they are present in forest habitat. We also have presence of fallen leaves, like I said before, on the ground. Presence of fallen leaves on the ground. Then also there is a presence of trees with thin bark. Thin bark. Thin bark. Now the reason for the thin bark is that they can lose water due to transpiration easily. All right? They lose water. They are not in, um, uh, 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 will I say, a dry place where thick bags are needed to reduce um, transpiration or loss of water by evaporation. Another characteristic you can find in a forest is the presence of trees that exist in strata. Presence of trees that exist in strata. When we say in strata, it simply means these trees are arranged as if they are in staircase form, in a staircase form. They are arranged that way. You have a high tree, an upper tree, or a tall, very tall tree, followed by one that is a bit tall, but not as tall as the other. Then we have the middle, and so you have trees arranged in that form. It is natural. It is a natural occurrence. So you have that, trees that are arranged in strata. Now, some of the organisms we find in um, forest um, habitat, mostly plants. We have the Iroko tree, the Iroko tree. We also have the Mahogany tree. Now, the Iroko tree, they possess um, tap and buttress root systems, tap roots and buttress root systems which aid anchorage. These, root, these uh, roots are for anchorage and support. They support the entire weight of the plant. They support the entire weight of the plant. We also have the African walnuts. We also have the obeche tree. 
but this is the African walnut tree. It possesses leaves which aid transport, transpiration and photosynthesis. Transpiration has to do with the loss of um, water to the environment. Loss of water, it can occur through the leaves and it can also occur through the stem. We also have examples of um, this thing, um, uh, uh, um, plants that can be found in um, forests. We have the obeche. Obeche tree can also be found in the forest. Now, looking at animals, animals that can be found in um, the forest, we have the monkeys. Monkeys, now monkeys, they possess long limbs, okay? And they also have what we call prehensile tails. And these prehensile tails are for climbing, mostly the limbs are for climbing and also for jumping and holding on to other branches. They use their pre prehensile tails also for that. We also have chameleons. You can see a chameleon. The chameleon also have prehensile tail. It also possesses protective coloration to disguise itself in times of um, having an encounter with a predator. We also have birds. You will see birds in forest, several types of birds. Most of them possess powerful wings for flight, powerful beaks for pecking on um, woods, and so many other things they use. They also have powerful limbs, okay? We also can find a lot of things. We can find snakes. We can find um, earthworms. Okay, we can find so many organisms or animals that can be located in a forest habitat. Also, the food chain in a forest habitat is as follows. We have green plants, we have grasshopper, of course, grasshopper can also be found in a forest habitat. We have toad and then we have hawk. The green plant serves as the producer, the grasshopper serves as the primary consumer, the toad serves as the secondary consumer and the hawk serves as the tertiary consumer, all right? Now, factors that affect forest habitat. We have temperature, we have sunlight, we have wind, we have rainfall, and so on. Temperature, sunlight, wind, as well as rainfall. These are some of the factors you can find affecting rainforest, sorry, the forest habitat. Now, the number three type of terrestrial habitat is grassland or savanna habitat, grassland. In so many countries, savanna has been given several names, several names. In some places, they call it savanna. In some other places, they call it grassland. In some other places, they call it pampas. In some other places, they call it uh, so many names, so many names. So whichever name it is called in your area, please note it is still grassland we are discussing. Now, what is grassland? It is a community of plants dominated by short but scattered shrubs and trees. Community of, lands, um, of plants dominated by short but scattered shrubs and trees. Now, grassland can also be seen as a transition from the forest a habitat to the arid land habitat from the forest to the arid land habitat now we have different types of grasslands we have what we call the tropical grassland and then we have the temperate grassland tropical grassland and then temperate grassland now let's take a look at some of the characteristics of grassland habitat characteristics of grassland habitat number one what you see dominant in a grassland habitat is the presence of grasses, tall grasses, tall grasses. Number two is presence of short but scattered trees and shrubs. It's in the definition. Presence of short but scattered trees and shrubs. They are present in a grassland. Number three, what you'll find out is the absence of stratified canopies. It means that the, the, the plants or the trees that are found there, they, don't, and they are not stratified. You don't see strata in a grassland, nor that you see the trees serving as canopies or windbreakers. But you can only find that in a forest habitat.
a forest habitat. Number four, what do we see in a grassland is presence of fire resistant trees, fire resistant trees. And number five is presence of drought resistant trees, drought resistant trees. Now, what are the plants or organisms that can be found in a grassland or savanna? Now, we have several plants that can be seen there. An example of a plant you can find there is the elephant grass. The elephant grass. Now, the elephant grass, they are predominant in that place. They have fibrous root system, which they use for absorbing water and minerals from the soil. Okay, they are mostly succulent, they have succulent stems. We also have the spare grass, the spare grass. Now, the spare grass is also found in grasslands. Now, they, they have what we call rhizomes, which help them to withstand intense heat, fire, as well as dry seasons. And then also we have the palm trees. We have palm trees. Now, the palm trees, they have thick barks, which protects it from being severely burnt. Protects it from being severely burnt. What about animals that are found in grassland? In grassland, we have several animals like the zebra. We have the giraffe. Now, in terms of um, the, the giraffe and the zebra, if you check these, these uh, animals, they have a kind of a camouflage skin. Okay, They, they can camouflage due to their body color which makes them undetected in some areas in the grassland, all right? Another again is we have wild cats found in grassland. Wild cats like the lions, the cheetah, the leopards, the tiger, and so on. They can be found in grassland habitats. And these wild cats, they possess powerful jaws and teeth for attacking their other animals, and they also have high sense of smell and detection of their prey. They can detect their prey. They have high sense of smell, okay, for detecting their prey. We also fi find kangaroo. We can also see a kangaroo in grassland. Now, the kangaroo, they possess long legs to help them escape danger, and they also have pocket of flesh to shield their young ones from hot weather and also from attack. All right, so that's the kangaroo. Now, what are the food chains we can see in a grassland? I just bring, brought out one. One is grass, zebra, and lions. So we have just three trophic level. The first one is grass, which talks about a producer. And the producer or the grass is eaten by the zebra, which serves as the primary consumer. And then the zebra is eaten by the lion, which serves as the secondary consumer. You can look at some of the organisms that you can find in um, the grassland habitat and then make your own food chain. We also have factors affecting grassland habitat. We have factors like temperature, we have rainfall, we have soil, we have light intensity, we have relative humidity. These are all factors and so many other factors, abiotic factors that affects grassland habitat. Next and the last type of terrestrial habitat is the arid land habitat. Another name for arid land habitat is a desert. A desert. A desert. Now, this is the type of terrestrial habitat with very low rainfall. You see very low rainfall and high evaporation rate. And also there is a very low relative humidity in arid land habitat. We're going to be looking at some of the characteristics of an arid land habitat. But before we go there, let's look at types of arid land. Types of arid land. Now, or you can call it types of desert. Now, we have two types of deserts. We have what we call the hot desert. An example is the um, Sahara Desert or the Arabian Desert. They are referred to as hot desert. Then we also have the cold desert that can be found in places like Europe. You can see it in, I think, North America or South America. You can find a cold desert, a very cold desert. 
Now, what are some of the characteristics of arid land or desert habitat? Now, number one thing you notice in a desert habitat or arid land habitat is scarcity of water. Scarcity of water. There is real scarcity of water. And based on this, uh, what most times brings about this scarcity of water is little or no rainfall that occurs there. Little or no rainfall is observed is one of the characteristic features of um, the arid land habitat. Next is, you can find, or next characteristics you can see, observe in arid land habitat is hot temperature. The temperature there is very, very high, very high. Number three is presence of sandy soil. You see more of sand in it. And remember, sandy soil uh, supports scanty vegetation. So it means that in an arid land habitat, you see little or no vegetation. Now, next, number three, four characteristics of arid land habitat is presence of high sunshine. And that high sunshine is what results in the hot temperature or high temperature. Next is predominance of strong wind. Yes, there is predominance of strong wind. There is a dominance of strong wind and also poor vegetation. And we also have low relative humidity. Low relative humidity. Now, what are some of the organisms that can be found in arid land? And we're also going to look at their adaptive features. Now, for plants, we have what we call the cactus plant. Now, cactus plant has been more of an ornamental plant. Most homes you go to, they have cactus plant. But cactus plant, they are mainly, mainly, on originally, they are found in arid lands. Now, what are some of their adaptive features? Now, arid, sorry, um, cactus plants are leafless plants and they have thorns. Now, the reason for the thorns or spikes on those plants is to reduce transpiration. And I said to you that transpiration simply means the loss of water. Now, for, instance, for the loss of water in, from the leaves of a plant or from the stems of a plant. Now, if this particular plant is located in a place or arid land where they, we said there is scarcity of water, one of the ways these organisms adapt in order to survive in that particular place is to have features that will help reduce transpiration. And one of those features is the presence of thorns or spikes on the body of the plant. Another thing again that also helps in terms of controlling water or conserving water is that it has thick succulent stems thick succulent stem and side branches to store water for long drought. Thick succulent stems and also side branches to help it store water for long drought. We also have the acacia. The acacia, they have, it has a deep root which absorbs underground water deep down in the soil. Deep roots. And then also we have the olenda. This plant has extremely deep roots which is also able to absorb water, underground water uh, deep in, uh, down the soil. Now, animals that can be found here in um, arid land, we have the camel. The camel. Now, the camel can drink lots of water to sustain themselves for several days, and they can withstand a wide range of body temperature during the day during the day. They can withstand a wide range of body temperature during the day. So you'll find um, camel in arid lands. You also see lizards and snakes. There is presence of lizards, there is presence of snakes in arid land. Mostly the rattlesnake can be seen in arid land. And you also find lizards, you also have different kinds of lizards. We have the um, um, monitor lizards and so many of them, the dragon lizards and all that, they can be found in arid lands. Now, these lizards, they have scales which also helps to reduce the rate at which water is being lost from their bodies. 
Remember that, that area, there is scarcity of water. So they have uh, features, and one of the features is scales. They possess scales, which helps to reduce um, the rate at which water is being lost from their body. Now, another organism or animal you can see in arid land is the locust. Now, the locusts have waterproof bodies and corticles. They also produce dry waste products to also enable them conserve water. Locusts, they are also found in arid land. Let's look at food chain in arid land habitat. Now, we have here two food chains we're going to look at. The first one is plants, desert rats, snakes. Now, the plants here serves as the producers. The desert rat serves as um, the primary consumer, and then the snake serves as the uh, um, secondary consumer. So the plant is eaten by the desert rat, and then the snake, uh, the desert rat is eaten by the snake. We also have a second type of food chain that can be found in arid land. We have plants, we have locusts, we have wasp, and then we have lizards. Okay? Now, the plant serving as the primary consumer, the locust serving as, sorry, the wasp serving, the plant serving as the producer, the locust serving as the primary consumer, the wasp serving as the secondary consumer, and then the lizards serving as the tertiary consumer. Now, let's look at factors that affect um, arid land habitat. Number one, we have temperature. We also have rainfall. We have sunshine or sunlight. We have wind. We have relative humidity and so many more. So these are the factors that affect arid land. Now, this brings us to the end on this class. Now, before we go, let's take a look at some questions from our exam guide app. Um, very quickly, very few questions. We have one here. They said the ecological factor that is common to aboral habitat. We did not discuss much about aboral habitat, but if you look at this question here, the one that is common to aboral, when you're talking about aboral habitat, you're actually looking at um, um, habitat of organisms that live on trees, all right, that lives on trees. An example is, um, okay, so many, it includes both plants and animals. But if you look at the options that are given here, the ecological factors given here, we have waves. No, waves has nothing to do with aboral habitat. We have salinity, it has nothing to do with aboral habitat. The two things that has something to do with aboral habitat is edaphic and altitude. But edaphic talks about the soil, so it is much on uh, more of um, grassland, arid land, forest, and all that. So it has nothing to do with a boral habitat. Now, the correct option to this answer, uh, to this question rather, is altitude. Altitude. Number two, which of the following is the least adaptive features for a boral life? Which of the following is the least adaptive features for a boral life? least adaptive features for arboreal life. We have counter shading of coat color. We have developing of long tails. We have um, possession of four limbs and then possession of claws. The correct answer should be A, counter shading of co coat colors. And then let's take a look at something that is related to what we discussed today. Which of the following is an adaptation of forest species? Remember, we talked about the characteristics of a forest. Now, A, is it few stomata? B, is it thick bark? No, we said in forest habitat, you find um, trees with thin bark. Then, is it reduced leaves? No, we said well, they have broad leaves, not reduced. And then the option that matches what we were discussing was buttress roots. We said they have tap and buttress root system. So the correct option here is C. Now let's take one more. Um, they said here, look at this. The presence of tall trees, broad leaves, and buttress roots are characteristics of the following. A, is it Sudan savanna? B, is it Guinea savanna? C, it is desert? 
and D is a tropical rainforest. The correct option is tropical rainforest. Thank you for participating in today's class. You can practice more questions using your exam guide app. The app scores and gives a detailed explanation of all the questions at the end of your practice test. You can also learn particular topics of interest with different modes like study mode, uh, mock mode, and even practice mode. It, is also, it also has other features that makes learning very fun. Now, it is a must for all serious students. Download from www.examguide.com if you don't have it yet. See you in the next class. Don't forget to subscribe to our channels, hit the notifi notification bell, and share the videos to your loved ones and friends that will benefit from it. Bye for now.